What's up everyone, I'm Callum on Toast, and in today's video I'm going to be showcasing some battles in the Jungle Cup with Breloom, which I think is one of the best core breakers for the current meta, being able to beat the likes of Vigoroth, Whiskash, Lantern, Quagsire, Shadow Steelix, etc, but it is also very glassy so not all of those matchups are super comfortable. Now of course it's going to suck against flying types, so I'm running Shadow Donphan to bait them out, or as I like to call it, Vigoroth at home, and that way if we do bait out a flying type or even something like a Lantern or a Mud Boy, we also have the ability to either Split those matchups or grab a shield advantage with Trailblaze, which is pretty useful for Breloom in the end game. I'm also running Quillfish in the lead because it has coverage for Talonflame and Altaria, which I think are two of the hardest checks to my backline. So, with that being said, let's just get into the question of the day. What have you found to be the best core breaker for the current Jungle Cup meta? Let me know in the comment section down below. And with that being said, let's get into the battles now. Alright, so heading into the first battle, we Quillfish into Vigoroth, so this is an okay matchup. We've also got two Pokemon in the back that can deal super effective counter damage, so eventually I will swap out though, but I am resisting the counters from the Vigoroth, so I'm going to stay in at least initially. Let the first charge move go through here. As the opponent goes for a Body Sam, I'm then going to fire off Aqua Tail number two straight away, and then if the opponent lets this go through, I'm going to swap into my Shadow Dom fan going for the Snipe. The opponent is able to throw a second Body Sam, but that's fine. I can tank this fairly well, and of course the counter will will go through. Now we bring out a Swampert, which unfortunately we don't have a significant enough energy advantage to make it to the Trailblaze, but we make it to a Body Sam, and that still grabs a shield. Now at this point, I'm actually going to shield myself. I realize here, whilst yes, I've got Breloom in the back that can deal with the Swampert fairly well, I might as well shield once, go for a Body Sam, grab both shields from the opponent here, and the opponent goes for the over farm. They swap into Steelix, but that's also fine with me, of course. Body Slam is resisted, but that's not what we care about. We care about coming in with the Breloom, and now we can go for a full counter farm down of course gonna shield this up probably gonna be a psychic fangs it is the psychic fangs it debuffs our defense but it doesn't matter of course breloom is gonna be winning cmp up against the swamper and a seed bomb is double super effective so seed bomb will be taken out the swamper and i'm able to take that game so ggs to the opponent there and you can see in that first battle breloom actually is able to beat all three Pokemon that the opponent was running. But into the next battle, we see Shadow and Frost in the lead. Not ideal, but we say swap into our Don Fan, and we're met with a Greedent. So going straight for the Body Sam, you can see, unfortunately, unlike Vigoroth, Body Sam is non stab so it doesn't chunk that much. But of course, Shadow Don Fan's counter gonna be hitting a little bit harder there. We do correctly shoot up the Trailblaze. I throw on the CMP tie with the Body Sam here. I don't really wanna tank a Body Sam, but the opponent's actually going to shield. And whilst, yes, this is boosted, we can still just barely live a Body Sam there. Go for the counter fire down. The opponent's going to come in with a Shinotic, which is quite a spicy pick. We're going to go for another Body Sam. Body Sam will be no shielded by the opponent. We've got Quillfish, and these poison things are hitting full double super effective. We can now come in with the Breloom, and I'm just going to play it safe. Use my shield here. It could be a Focus Blast. It's just a Trailblaze, and that's fine with me. They do boost their attack. They're going to make it to either a Brutal Swing or a Thunder Punch, but either way, we do just barely tank that. We can now go for a Dynamic Punch. This is resisted damage, but it doesn't matter. It's still does big damage we put them into poison sting farm down range and i'm able to take that game so ggs to the opponent there into next game we see quillfish into altaria so this can be a little bit tricky here if we don't land the ice beam straight away but i'm gonna over farm here go for eight poison stings then throw the ice beam do they respect the damage no we one shot the altaria which is absolutely huge and then they come in with a dance pass and of course Braylon completely walls dance pass and it also completely walls this quagsire assuming they're not running like acid spray or sludge bomb which they are very unlikely to run here but now we can go for a trailblaze trailblaze is going to grab that shield advantage which is very nice and at this point i can just safely let this move go through I might even come in with my Quillfish here just because we don't need it up against the Dunsparce. Breloom going to completely wall both Pokemon, but we do have some energy here. So we're going to go for the Aquatel. Aquatel is going to be no shield. We make it to a second Aquatel before they make it to the Stone Edge. Of course, Aquatel from the Quagsire wouldn't quite take us out there. Now we can come in with the Breloom. I can safely no shield anything that they throw. You're going to see Rockside isn't the right move to go for because Drill Run does do slightly more damage. But either way, it doesn't matter. I'm able to get the full counter farm down and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there, into next game we see another Vigoroth in the lead, this time we're actually going to safe swap straight away into our Don Fan, and we bring out a Bomber Snow, which is fine with us, of course, we've got counter, we can hit for super effective damage, they do actually tank that Body Sam fairly well, but I'm just going to shield this up, and then I will go and over farm in this matchup, throwing on the CMP Titan, no actually, never mind, we can go for the full counter farm down there, which is even better for me, and we're going to see a Lantern coming in, so possibly should have waited to see what came in there, but I blind throw the Body Sam, the opponent correctly throw, oh, 
well correctly calls that we were just going to go for that blind throw now we're going to go for a trailblaze trailblaze is going to grab a shield from the opponent they do get a big spark farm down but that's absolutely okay for me we are now going to no shield this we can resist everything they throw although thunderbolt does quite a lot of damage there we're now going to shield in this matchup and i'm hoping to go for a full counter farm down here can we get the farm down no we're barely not able to do so and i was so confident that we were going to get that farm down that I actually didn't even try and throw a charge move there or make a catch or anything like that and that's such a bad mistake from me and now at this point the opponent can just go for a thunderbolt thunderbolt will be taken out the quillfish and unfortunately we do lose that game despite being in a very good position there to just make that catch and then we would have been absolutely fine but gg's to the opponent there into next game we see lantern in the lead this time around we say swap into our shadow don fan and the opponent comes in with vigoroth which is not a very good response whatsoever i do call this the vigoroth at home but actually in the matchup up against vigoroth it is a winning matchup because of course counters are going to hit full super effective damage I do shield that just to be safe though and the opponent's going to come in with a chestnut so we're going to overwhelm here go for the back-to-back -back body sams first one is going to do some nice damage or grab a shield it does grab the shield we can now go for body slam number two and by the way shadow don fan can actually learn play rough which might grab shields against certain pokemon like this chestnut or maybe an altaria but now i'm just going to no shield here i realize breloom is my win condition they go for the frenzy plant they then make a really nice catch there catching the resisted aqua tail onto lantern which isn't ideal for me but you're going to see here, I'm going to shield the first charge proof as the opponent probably going to go and full send a Thunderbolt, which is exactly what they do. Now at this point, I'm going to overfarm massively and the opponent just settles for a Surf this time around, which means I can go for a full counter farm down. And as long as the Chestnut wasn't at back-to-back -back moves when they threw the Frenzy Plant, which it doesn't look like they were as they would have just thrown the charge proof there, we can go for back-to-back -back Seed Bombs. First one grabs that final shield. This one was a CMP tie, but Seed Bomb will be taken out of the Chestnut and I'm able to take that game. So GG to the opponent there, into next game we see Quillfish into Vigoroth, so once again, fairly neutral lead matchup here, sometimes I did like to just go for the Aquatel straight away, other times I would swap into my Shadow Donphan, this time we go for the Aquatel, then we swap into Donphan, and we bait out a Shadow Whiskash, now we can go straight for the Trailblaze here, if the opponent does not respect the damage here, Trailblaze would very easily one shot the Shadow Whiskash, so they do shield it up, but the good thing here is that we've boosted our attack, so I'm actually going to shield this, they actually just go for a Mud Bomb bait, which is fine with me, not going to debuff my attack there with the school and now we can go for a body slam and even a body slam is threatening that shield so at this point i can just let the dawn fan go down another mod bomb will be taking us out here I am a little bit scared because they have only thrown mud bombs, but I don't think this is enough energy for a blizzard, so I will no shield. It is just another mud bomb, and then the opponent swaps into Wigglytuff there. Bit of a questionable play, as now we can hard counter them with the Quillfish. Go for an Aquatel. Aquatel, well, a second Aquatel will be enough damage to take out the Wigglytuff, so we throw at the last possible second before they make it to the next charge move, taking out the Wigglytuff, and here I'm not going to bother throwing a charge move here. The opponent will make it to yet another mud bomb, but that's absolutely fine. Mud bomb will be taking us out we can come in with the breloom and i will be able to make it to a dynamic punch and i can just safely no bubble this move here as dynamic punch still takes out the vigoroth and i'm able to take that game so GG's to the opponent there into next game we see Clodsire in the lead so we can stay in this lead match up here and we will the opponent's actually running Poison Sting which is very nice for me and also one of the things about Breloom is that uh, whilst yes Clodsire is a poison type Pokemon typically they're going to run Stone Edge and Earthquake in this meta both of which Breloom can resist so it's actually not that bad of a matchup but here we're going to throw two Arquitels first one is no shielded the second one is shielded and then we correctly shield up an Earthquake now here I am going to go straight for the Arquitel and then eventually I should be swapping out of this matchup into my Shadow Don fan, and we do swap there, but we over farm. And honestly, that was quite a poor play there because now the opponent will actually be able to outpace me to the next body slam. Whereas before, if we swap one turn sooner or like one fast move sooner, then we could have made it to the charge move on the CMP tie. But that's fine, we do get the counter farm down. They come back in with their. Clod's eye, so we're going to go straight for a Body Slam here. Body Slam is actually going to grab a shield. Of course, the threat of an Earthquake is still real with Shadow Don Fan. We go for Body Slam number two, and the opponent can go for a full resisted Poison Sting farm down. Nope, they're actually not able to do so, but instead, they snipe with their Shadow Bomber Snow. So we're going to come in with the Quillfish here, and honestly, I should have tried to make a catch or something here, because we go for the Ice Beam. Ice Beam is barely not going to be enough damage to take up the Bomber Snow, but after the Seed Bomb nerf a few seasons ago, Breloom does 
doesn't get there particularly fast. So whilst we only take one fast move, uh, fast move from that Abomber Snow, the opponent is probably going to be able to outpace me two back to back charge boosts here before we make it to a seed bomb, which is super sad here. Honestly, one more counter, we could have got there in time. But Stone Edge takes out the Breloom despite being resisted, and unfortunately, we do lose that game. But GG's to the opponent there, and into the next battle, we're going to see a Mud Boy in the lead. And honestly, this doesn't look too good for us, but you're going to see we actually can win the one shield scenario if we do correctly shield up an Earthquake. So the opponent lets that first move go through there. We're going to shield, and the opponent is going to full send the Earthquake, which is big news for me, because now we can farm two back-to-back -back Aquatels. The opponent actually throws there on the CMP tie. So that is clearly just going to be a Hydro Cannon, which, of course, we will resist. It's going to do a lot of damage there, but it won't quite threaten to KO. So now we can go for an Aquatel, and I'll tell from this range barely won't take out the swampert but two more poison stings does the job we're going to swap out straight away into our shadow don fan as the opponent comes in with a vigor off so i'm going to no shield this first charge roof here the opponent goes for the body slam of course and now we're going to go for a trailblaze only making it to one charge roof so if they do no shield this we're going to boost our attack here and the opponent comes in with a skarmory so this is looking a little bit scary for us but it just depends if Braden can make it to a seed bomb and a dynamic punch before they make it to back-to-back -back sky attacks it will be very close here but we are going to see the opponent throws the first charge move. I'm definitely going to shield this up here. So they go for the sky attack. We can now over farm here. Going for a seed bomb. This is double resisted. So if they do no shield it, it actually wouldn't quite take them out there. We make it to the dynamic punch. And then we make a very pointless catch there. It doesn't really make a difference. Sky attack will be taking us out. But we've got the dynamic punch loaded anyways. So dynamic punch will be enough to very easily take out the Skarmory from that range. And I'm able to take that game. So GG set up there, internet's going to see a Shadow Charizard in the lead, so very good lead matchup for me, they're going to say swap into Lantern and we respond with our Breloom. Now, unfortunately because we are a little bit slow to swap out there, they will outpace me to a Thunderbolt before we make it to even a Seed Bomb, and that does way more damage than I was expecting, so unfortunately if the opponent wants to double shield here, they can and they will be able to flip switch advantage. So at this point I'm definitely going to shield here, but unfortunately they can just shield my second Seed Bomb and then go for a full Spark Farm Down, which won't be ideal here. We go for that seed bomb, they do shield, and now we have lost switch advantage. But what I'm going to do now is I realize they are probably in range where we can just shield once and go for a full counter farm down with the Shadow Dom fan. And Shadow Dom fan with a lot of energy can be very dangerous in this meta. So the opponent's actually going to give up switch advantage, which was so unnecessary. And then they also don't farm to the Shadow Ball, which is even better for me because seed bomb definitely doesn't take us out. We're going to over farm as much as possible. Go for the Ice Beam. Ice Beam is going to take out the Trevenant. And as well, we leave with an Aqua Aquatel loaded, which is absolutely huge. Aquatel will nearly one-shot the Charizard. We actually put them into counter farm down range, and we can make it to a Trailblaze. This is unnecessary, but Trailblaze takes out the Lantern, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there, internet's going to see Quillfish into Mantine, so a bit of a trickier lead here for us, as of course it's not as good as either a Talonflame or an Altaria, so we're going to no shield the, ch the first charge reef here, just going to be an airy lace, but you can see they've already put me into the yellow health range, we're going to go for the ice beam here, we did over farm considerably, but they do let that go through, and they are able to make it to another airy lace before we make it to the next ice beam, so I'm going to shield that up, I'm going to go for an over farm here, and then I don't know why I tried to swap into my shadow dom fan there, I don't think they were even at the airy lace just yet, so unfortunately the opponent does over farm, they can go for the ice beam, near one shotting the shadow dom fan, we do make it to a body sand which is nice but it just doesn't help us that much and at this point it's pretty much game over i'm gonna come in with my breloom recognizing that we can tank anything they can throw assuming they're not running sludge one which they're probably not and the opponent is gonna full send an earthquake we do live that though we can now over farm go for a seed bomb just before they make it to the next charge move and a seed bomb coming through will be no shielded and at this point this is definitely game over i'm gonna no shield the opponent takes us out with a stone edge we can come back in with the quillfish just for the sake of it i'm gonna go for the aqua taking out the Clodzar to see what that third Pokemon was and it was a vigor off so definitely a winnable game for us if we played that lead matchup a lot better but unfortunately we did screw it up but GG's to that opponent there now into the next battle, a bit of a tricky lead here just because, of course, we can throw only resisted damage, but likewise, the opponent can only also throw resisted damage. So what I was hoping for is the opponent would throw straight away, but they're not throwing here, so I kind of had to throw some energy. I don't want to go over 100. The opponent will finally go for a gong shot, which does huge damage there. We swap into our Shadow Dom fan, and we bait out a Bomber Snow, which is actually not that bad for us. We can go for a Body Slam here. Body Slam is not quite going to take them out, but it does grab a shield in this matchup. So I'm actually going to shield as well, and I will be able to out 
outpace them to the next body slam as we do have an energy advantage and once again gonna throw on the CMP tie knowing that we do win CMP here. Body slam is gonna be no shielded by the opponent. They're gonna come back in with the Toxapex and if they go for a full poison jab farm down I might actually make it to back to back body slams here. So the first one does get no shielded but I do make it to a second body slam which is very nice. Body slam should be grabbing a shield at this point and because we grab that shield I'm gonna swap into my Quillfish going for the harder hitting Ice Beam here. It still doesn't quite take them out though, which is very unfortunate. But their final Pokemon is going to be a Vigoroth, so that's fine with us. Aquatel does put them into range, but we can just come in with the Breloom and go for a full counter farm down. That Toxapex does have a lot of energy though, so what I'm going to do here, I have to no shield. Body Slam gonna do a ton of damage in this matchup, but Breloom is able to tank it. We are one away from the Seed Bomb. The opponent probably at 100 energy here, but it doesn't make a difference. We shield up the Brine, and now we can go for the Seed Bomb. And of course, from this range, Seed Bomb will be taking out the Toxapex, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there into next game. We see Quillfish into a Shadow Swamp up. So, so we've seen already that this actually isn't that bad of a matchup. We're going to go straight for the Aqua Tail. This is going to do about half their health here in this matchup. The opponent does choose to no shield the first move here. And they do build up to a potential Earthquake. So I'm going to shield the first one as the opponent's going to go for a bait with the Hydro Cannon. But that's absolutely fine. Again, they're just going to fire off a Hydro Cannon. So with the Shadow Swamp up, of course, they can just go Hydro Cannon in this matchup. And they will eventually be able to Mud Shot Farm me down. So I'm not going to allow that to happen. I swap into my Breloom. Honestly, probably should have swapped into my Shadow Dawn fan there, because Breloom just isn't that safe of a swap. But the opponent comes in with a Scrafty, which is fine with me. Now here, I don't really know why I threw the Seed Bomb there. Of course, I wanted to throw before they make it to a Charge Weave, but it was always just going to be a Power Up Punch, which isn't threatening of a Shield. So, a bit of a strange play from me, but that's fine. They're now going to come in with a Charger Bug, so we're going to go straight for the Dynamic Punch. Both moves are resisted, but Dynamic Punch even resisted, does about half the health of the Charger Bug. We do get them very low, but not into counter farm down range. So this will be a little bit tricky here. We of course gonna double resist the Volt Switch damage, but an X Scissor is gonna do quite a lot of our health here. So gonna no shield, they go for the X Scissor, but then they swap back into Swamp Pot. I'm able to get the full counter farm down. And at this point, this is game over. We can go for one extra counter. I will be at the back to back body Sams. The first one should be grabbing the final shield from the opponent, and we are able to throw a second body Sam immediately. And of course, from this range, this will be taken out the Charger Bug, and I'm able to take that game. So GG set up over there into the next battle. We see Quillfish into Lantern. So of course, gonna be safe swapping into my Shadow Dawn fan. Behind on energy, I'm not gonna make it to a Trailblaze, but I will be able to go for a Body Sand before they can even fire off a Surf. So of course, when you do swap, you are one turn behind, but if you throw that charge move first, that actually evens the playing field here. So we also grab a Shield as well, which is quite interesting. And then the opponent comes in with a Zwilus. So this is not a good answer to the Dawn fan. So we're gonna go for a Body Sam, grabbing that final Shield from the opponent. The opponent throws on really good timing there. Throwing just before we make it to that next body Sam, but that's fine. We're gonna let it go through come in with our Breloom Go for the counter farm down and the opponent is going to come in with a Toxicroak So not ideal for us and we are slightly slow to swap out there So they're able to outpace me to a mud bomb I should live this but if the switch clock is up They can swap out but I don't think it quite was for them as they did take a while to swap out of the lantern lead matchup Now they can come back in with the lantern, but things are looking perfectly fine I am of course going to shield this up. We are very glassy so Yes, it is resisted, but I can just safely farm up two back to back charge moves here, farming to 99 or 98 energy, going straight for the Seed Bomb. Seed Bomb will be taken out the Lantern, and now we can also fire off a Dynamic Punch. A Dynamic Punch, even resisted, takes out the Toxic Rogue, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there into the next battle. We see Quillfish into Skarmory. So not great for us because of course they do resist the Poison Sting damage, but we're also resisting the Steel Wings. And of course Aquatel did get a buff this season. It's gonna do some decent damage in this matchup, but you can see we're probably not even gonna be able to three shot them with the Aquatels, which certainly isn't ideal. The second Aquatel does come through, but you can see a third Aquatel just barely won't be enough damage to KO. So we shield up the Sky Attack. It is a bait, but honestly Sky Attack would very nearly KO us. We're now Gonna go for a third Aquatel, nearly taking them out, going for the snipe with the Shadow Dawn fan. But unfortunately, they do barely hang on. They get off a Brave Bird, which near one shots us, and then they come in with Tentacruel, and this looks like it's game over already. Not a lot we can do here, of course. I'm gonna come back in with the Quillfish. We can only hit for resisted damage, but the opponent can hit much harder than we can. So we go for the Aquatel here. Aquatel is gonna be no shielded, it does very little damage, and as well, the opponent is gonna go and full send the Scald, taking out the Quillfish despite being resisted. And we will get fully poisoned jab farmed down by the tentacruel. And unfortunately, we do lose that game. 
but GG's to the opponent there into the next battle with the Quillfish into Altaria. So last time the Altaria did not respect the damage coming from an Ice Beam. We're going to play it exactly the same. Go for eight Poison Stings, full send the Ice Beam, and the opponent once again does not respect the Quillfish. We're able to one-shot them as they come in with a Shadow Swamper. So going to go straight for the Aqua Tail here. I'm not going to swap out just because, of course, we want to align a Braylon to the Swampert. So I'm now going to no shield as the opponent's going to go and take us out with a Hydro Cannon. We can come in with the Breloom and they've got another Toxicroak in the back and this is a little bit scarier for us as the Toxicroak has both shields still intact. So going to go for the Body Slam, grabbing that first shield. But if the opponent wants to, they can fully counter farm us down. They will throw just before we make it to Body Slam number two. I kind of need to shield in this matchup though. So we will go for that Body Slam number two. This will be grabbing the final shield from the opponent. But can I go for a full counter farm down here? This is going to be very close. I'm going to shield, respect the damage, and the opponent full sent the sludge bomb there. That would easily one-shot us. They do make it to a last-second charge move, but is this just a mud bomb? Yes, it is. We're able to tank that. And now we can go for a seed bomb into the Swampert, coming back in. And seed bomb will, of course, take out the Shadow Swampert, and I'm able to take that game. But GG's to the opponent there into the next battle. We see Quillfish into Shadow Dragonite. So unlike Altaria, this isn't very comfortable for us because they will, first of all, outpace us to a charge move before we make it to the Ice Beam. This opponent, very happy to just go for a full Dragon Breath farm down, it would seem. As we do go and full send the Ice Beam, pretty obvious they would shield that. And we're only making it to an Aquatel here, but the opponent's going to double shield anyway. So we swap into our Shadow Dom fan. I should be able to live any charge move that they do throw. So I'm going to no shield the first one. They go for Dragon Claw, but we barely miss out on making it to the Body Sam. And that is an absolute nightmare for me because this Shadow Dragonite still has a ton of health remaining and a ton of energy. So we're definitely going to have to shield here. Probably going to have to double shield as the opponent full sends a superpower, which is quite unnecessary. But I'm going to shield. They still make it to a second charge move anyways, making it to two superpowers. But they had a Pelipper in the back. So didn't really matter if we did take out the Dragonite there. Pelipper was always going to beat my backline and unfortunately we are going to be taken out by a weather ball but we do lose that game so ggs to the opponent there into next battle we see quillfish into a shadow steelix so i don't mind this at all we are of course going to go straight for an aquatel here throwing off the four poisonous things that is good timing up against a three turn fast move and then we're going to swap here trying to catch the charge dude. we do of course successfully catch what i expect to be a psychic fangs and it is the psychic fangs but the opponent comes in with an altaria so i'm going to over farm here making it like i've got a play rough the opponent probably not going to expect a play rough but they do end up shielding anyway so that's fine with me we only make it to one charge move there but we do grab a shield which is very nice. We're now going to come in with the Quillfish, of course. Don't want to come in with my Breloom, so I'm going to shield this up here. I should be able to outpace them to the Ice Beam, but if the opponent does shield the Ice Beam here, these Dragon Breaths are really chunking, so we're going to go for the Ice Beam here. Ice Beam is going to be shielded by the Altaria this time around. I wasn't certain if I would make it to the Ice Beam. It didn't look likely, so I settled for the Aquatel. We're now going to come in with the Breloom. I should be able to make it to a Sea Bomb just before they make it to a second Sky Attack here, but it will be very close. So we are going to see the opponent actually swaps back into the Steelix, which is perfect for me as we get the full counter farm down. They then come in with Vigoroth. We can over farm here, go for a dynamic punch, and dynamic punch, of course, will be one shotting the Vigoroth. And I can make it to a seed bomb, but this is double resisted. Does this KO the Altaria? Yes, it does, and I'm able to take that game. So GG to the opponent there into possibly the final battle of this video. We lead into Talonflame, so this is good news for me. But I'm choosing to stay in here, so we're just going to fire off an Aquatel after seven poison stings. One turn before they make it to a potential flame charge or a Brave Bird or a Fly. I'm definitely just going to shield this up here. The opponent full sends a Brave Bird, which is huge for me because they triple debuff their defense, allowing me to get a full poison sting farm down. Now they come in with your Novan Stonefisk, but we've got nearly 100 energy here. So we go for the Aquatel, we then farm up to back-to-back -back Aqua Tails, going for a second one here, and then I will swap into my Shadow Dom fan, banking some of the energy. The opponent going to stay in initially before swapping into Tropius, and this is massive that we bait it out here, because of course, Breloom wants nothing to do with an Air Slash user. Of course, being double... Uh, taking double super effective damage from the flying typing, but I make it to back-to-back -back body slams because they stayed in for so long with their Stunfisk. Leaf Blade will, of course, one-shot the Don Fan, but that's absolutely fine. We do have an Aquatel already loaded, but of course, we're going to be full sending an Ice Beam in this matchup here. Ice Beam will be coming through. We're going to actually undercharge it. It still takes out the Tropius, which is fine. We force the opponent to throw their energy straight away, but this is also fine as Braylon will completely wall the energy from the Unovan Stunfisk, and the opponent is just going to concede the match there. 
So that's going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy it, please make sure you leave a like, leave a comment letting me know, and as well, don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. That way you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. And if you want to take your support even further, you can now become a channel member with perks including early access to new videos, shoutouts at the end of each video, custom loyalty badges, and custom emojis to use in the comments. I want to say a massive thank you to everyone that has already become a channel member your support is greatly appreciated and with that being said thank you all so much for watching today's video and i hope you have a great rest of your day